Thank you, Lee. And good morning to our Outlook delegates. Over the past few years, ABS has undertaken research into the prospects for global food demand to 2050, especially in the fast-growing Asian market. Food demand in Asia is expected to increase because of a larger population, growth in per-person incomes, and increasing urbanization, especially in countries such as China, India, and Southeast Asia. Where significant market opportunities exist in Asia, there will be strong competition for Australian agricultural exports from other exporters, in addition to expected higher domestic production in many Asian countries. To take up the opportunities presented by food demand growth in Asia, it will be important for Australian agriculture to maintain its international competitiveness and increase productivity growth. It will be important to maintain the green and clean image of Australian agricultural exports and to produce high quality agricultural products to sell into the Asian markets. On the trade negotiations front, the recent signing of a free trade agreements with the Republic of Korea, Japan, and China will improve access to these markets for many Australian agricultural exports. Further benefits to Australian agricultural exports can be expected once the Trans-Pacific Partnership Agreement is in force. Where these recently signed trade agreements pave a solid foundation for Australian agriculture to take the opportunities presented by global food demand growth, developments in other agricultural exporting countries and their policies could also have a significant impact on export performance of Australian agriculture. So what are the possible changes to the international operating environment which could have a significant impact on Australian agriculture in the foreseeable future? To answer this question, we first have a look at the factors that have contributed to export growth in Australian agriculture. Using the Australian beef industry as an example, ABS research indicates that increased market access for Australian beef was a major contributing factor to the increase in Australian beef exports over the past decade or so. The increase in market access for Australian beef exports has come from reduced import tariffs or trade barriers in some export markets and because of disease issues in major competing or importing countries such as the discoveries of mad cow disease in the United States and Japan in the early 2000s. Australian beef exports in shipped weight reached over 1.3 million tons in 2014. This compares with below 1 million tons in the year 2000, a rise of 40% over this period. We estimate that over 85% of the increase in Australian beef exports between 2000 and 2014 was attributable to increased market access. It should also be noted that the Australian dollar over this period appreciated by 55% against the US dollar. An appreciating Australian exchange rate adds to the challenge in improving market assets. Of course, now we have a much lower Australian dollar against the US dollar, and it seems 
the lower Australian dollar is likely to stay at least in the next few years. Slightly over 10% of the increase in beef exports was due to income growth in our beef export markets, leading to higher demand. Now let us take a look at the growth in another major beef exporter, Brazil, over this period. Brazil's beef exports were over 1.2 million tons in 2014, an increase of around 1 million tons from its beef exports in 2000. Between 2000 and 2014, it is estimated that close to 40% of the growth in Brazil's beef exports was attributable to reduced supply costs in Brazil compared with its major competitors on world market. This has resulted in a significant increase in the competitiveness of Brazil's beef exports. The reduction in Brazil's beef supply costs mainly reflected productivity growth in Brazil's beef industry and improved efficiency in its supply chains. Around another 50% of the growth in Brazil's beef exports was attributable to improved market access, especially to the Russian Federation, the Middle East, and some Asian countries. In contrast to the case of Australia, Brazil's currency, the real, depreciated by 22% against the US dollars in this period. Now, what about the future? With support from the newly signed free trade agreements, we forecast that the real value of Australian beef exports will increase by a further 25% by 2030, assuming no major changes to the international operating environment. However, there are downside risks to this outlook. A major downside risk stems from a possible increase in international competition, especially from Latin America. An important question is that what would be the impact on Australian beef exports if the Latin American countries were to gain improved access in markets in China and Southeast Asia or even in the United States and North Asia, including Japan and Korea. Latin American countries have been expanding their access to international markets in recent years. Beef from Uruguay now competes with Australian beef in China, the United States, and Korea. China's beef imports from Uruguay reached 123,000 tons in 2015, this compares with China's beef imports from Australia of 156,000 tons in the same period. In May 2015, China left the ban on beef imports from Brazil. In the December quarter 2015, Brazil exported over 41,000 tons of beef to China. This compares with Australia's beef exports to China in the same quarter of under 42,000 tons. Argentina has also emerged as a supplier of beef to China with imports of 43,000 tons in 2015. Success in these markets is expected to encourage the Latin American countries to seek further improvement in international market access. Now, if the Latin American countries were to further improve their beef supply costs and their access to markets in China and Southeast Asia, ABA estimates that Australian beef exports to these markets could be adversely affected by a wrong US 340 million by 2030 than would otherwise be the case. This estimate is in 2014. US dollars. Under this scenario, Australian beef exports to China would be close to 30% lower than would otherwise 
be the case by 2030. Of course, with the increase the competition from Latin American beef in China and Southeast Asia, Australian beef ex exports could be diverted to other world markets. Even if Australian beef exports are successfully diverted to other destinations, total Australian beef exports will still be lower than would otherwise be the case by 2030. Specifically, the strongest competition will come from beef exports from Brazil. Over the past two decades, beef production in Brazil has increased by more than 50% to around 10 million tons a year in carcass weight, and has benefited from abundant grazing land and relatively low labor costs. We also simulated the effects on Australian beef exports in another scenario in which the Latin American countries are assumed to gain or improve access to markets in the United States, Japan, and Korea. Under this scenario, Australian beef exports to the US and the North Asia are projected to be significantly lower than would otherwise be the case by 2030. Under the assumption that Australian beef exports are successfully diverted to other destinations, the total value of Australian beef exports will still be over half a billion lower by 2030 in 2014 US dollars. To meet the challenge of increased competition in international markets, it will be important for Australian agriculture to maintain its competitiveness by improving productivity growth and infrastructure support. Given the theme of this conference is investing in agriculture, we also simulated the effects on Australian beef exports of increased infrastructure support to reduce beef supply costs in Australia. Under the assumption that improved infrastructure will lead to a reduction of around 5% in beef supply costs in Australia from the model baseline by 2030, Australian beef exports are projected to be around 200 million higher in 2014 US dollars by 2030 than would otherwise be the case. In addition to infrastructure improvement, Reductions in government regulations and growth in on-farm or off-farm productivity in the beef supply chains will also lead to lower beef supply costs. Now for grants and oil seeds, there have also been international developments that have important implication for the Australian industry. In late December 2015, the newly elected government in Argentina announced the removal of export taxes on wheat, maize, and other commodities. The tax on soybeans was lowered from 35 to 30 percent and will be reduced annually from now on. The Argentine government also abolished the foreign exchange control in late December, leading to a depreciation of its currency by over 25 percent. These reforms are expected to result in increased farm sector returns, higher agricultural production, and exports in Argentina in the years to come. This slide presents some projections from the private sector in Argentina of agricultural production by 2020. With plentiful supplies of grains and oil seeds currently on world markets. A significant increase in exports from Argentina has the potential to place significant downward pressure on world prices. Now let me present you with a few take home messages. First, projected growth in Asian food demand presents market opportunities for Australian agricultural exports, but international competition will be strong. 
Specifically, there have been international developments which have the potential to impact on Australian agricultural exports. In the presentation, I have outlined it the possible implication of recent developments in Latin America for Australian beef, grains, and oil seeds. Other examples include the potential for growth in grains production in the Black Sea region, an issue well recognized by the industry. In order to meet these challenges, it will be important for Australian agriculture to maintain its green, and clean status and continue to improve productivity growth and infrastructure support with increased investment. Second, while well, the recently signed free trade agreements are providing support for agricultural exports, some Australian uh, agricultural products are still subject to quotas and import tariffs in markets in Asia and other parts of the world. ABS research indicates that improved market access has been an important factor contributing to growth in Australian agriculture. Therefore, it will be important to continue working to reduce trade barriers on world markets for Australian agricultural exports. This concludes my presentation. Thank you very much.